All right, so now we've got the head. We've refined the head. The head is great, but there's still some things I can play with, right? And so I can keep working on the head, and I have some ideas. If I'm going to have that bright tongue, and I'm going to have it kind of fill up this space in this particular way, I think I want a little bit more color in the in the eye. So just to, to keep with this pattern of internal compositing, I'm going to show you how I can change the color of just the inside of that eye. So what I would do is I select this layer. So to do that, I do auto select layer. And I'm going to, with quite a bit of overlap, select around this inside part of the eye and duplicate it, Command-J. Then I'm going to go to Image Adjustment, Hue Saturation, and I'm going to click Colorize because no amount of playing with the hue is going to make that bright red because there's not a lot of color there. But if I colorize it, I can force it into a color. And then I can actually make it darker or lighter. And then I can play with levels. So let's try something like that. And then, because I did it as a duplicate, I can play with its opacity and blend that in with what's behind. And then I can use my quick selection, I think will work well, because it's a pretty crisp edge. Select around it. Do it a little bit smaller than that. Come on. <laughs> Never mind, quick selection is not working out for me. Command D. Maybe I'll just use my eraser. I'm going to sharp edge my eraser. About 90% hardness. And I'm going to go in at about 80% opacity. Get rid of that hard edge and then kind of blend it, blend in that shadow with what's already underneath. I know everything matches. The only thing that's changed is the color. So this is a pretty easy transition. But it's going to give that eye a lot more presence. Because as I developed the head, my sketch informed my shapes, but the different references really inform the color. So that really helps, right? Okay, so once you're done with your head, you're going to close that folder and you're going to lock it. Lock it for the time being. And now I'm going to move on to the body. So for my body reference, in some ways it's nice because I have fewer fewer options. And I wanted to start with this really ugly mushroom, which will be the, the spine in the back. It's a nice clear focus. It's already at the right size. I do a rough cut out of it. I like the kind of beaten up texture, almost looks like armor. I duplicate that. Remember, it's okay to use unusual things for the parts of your creature. You do not need to um, always find something with a chest when you're doing chess. You don't have to always find something with with fingers when you're doing hands. Right? I'm going to shrink it down a little bit. And now that I have the head, I'm actually going to start building the body on top of my sketch, but just a little oversized. And remember, you have all the skills of warping and transforming at your disposal. So this is kind of like a turtle shell. And if I want to, I can always move my whole head group. As long as I have auto select under group, I can move that on and see how that works. Right. So 
So I'm working the body a little bit closer to size. But before I start erasing away from it, I want to bring in some other things. And why it's nice to do it off of your sketch is so you can see the other things. So like the spikes on the back. I was kind of thinking these mushrooms might be interesting as one, one option. Rough cutout. But I am going to leave their shadows because those can inform how lighting would work. And then duplicate. And then delete the smart layer. And then this layer, it's a nice clear reference, but it would have to be rotated, right? And the problem is it's a little flat in terms of its perspective. It's not at the angle I need. So I might need to, to warp it a lot. Or maybe it's just not even usable, but it's a nice idea to inform. Or maybe it's what I use for my tail or what I use for a different part. So I can think, how might this work? Can I get it to work? And it's okay to just abandon it, right? It was one option. And it's kind of cool on the back in this way. And that, that is starting to work. So they just feel more like spines instead of discs, right? Okay, so that's one option. Another option was something like this. These kind of really big scales. And what I loved about this is it's so easy to cut out. There's such sharp shapes. And it creates a nice little shell as well. But first I have to do a rough cutout. And we're just practicing these same skills. Also, because it's such a bright orange on a dark green, it should be fairly easy to use the quick selection tool or even the magic wand tool to select it out and cut it out. And I'm actually going to try that right now just to get a sense of how I should place it. So that didn't work. I'm on the wrong way. There we go. Yes, yeah, so this is a nice example of where the quick selection tool is making short work. Because the photo reference is so clear. Okay, there's still little debris, right, that needs to be cleaned up. But I don't even know if I'm using it yet. Okay, so now I have two kind of options. This is you know, cool kind of natural camouflage. It can already be in the right lighting, the right angle. So let's put the head on and see. Okay, so this is one kind of general way it can work. And then what's the other? This is the other. So which one do I like better? And I haven't played with the color yet or done anything to make them match yet. But I think, yeah, I think this one kind of works overall more organically. So with the head there, not bolted into place yet, but just kind of suggested, I'm going to try to shape this to fit the body a little bit. and to help my silhouette kind of show the suggestion of a spine. And then because I have the head there, I'm going to go ahead and play with my color adjustments. So levels for the lighting. I want it fairly bright because it's in sunlight. I'm going to limit the highlights though. Don't want to deepen those shadows. And then for the color balance, for the temperature of the lighting. All 
All right. So now, before I cut out the mushroom underneath, I can work with shaping it to kind of overlap where the leg joints will come out. And then I can do a cutout of that bottom edge. Again, I'll try the quick selection tool. Did the trick. Very nice. And then is there any aspect of this that I want to use? So I have an idea, maybe it's not like I'm lacking for references, but what I could do is maybe use this as part of the leg. I'll show you what I mean. Oops. I transform it and flip it horizontally. This could become, yeah, could become a foot or something, but nope, I'm good without using it. All right, so I'm going to delete the ones I don't need. I'm going to delete the, the smart layers that things came from. And for the time being, I'm actually going to move the head out and really just work on these transitions and this body. So how can I make this all work together? Well, first, I can clean up those little selection marks that were left by the quick selection tool. Remember, it's not perfect. Though it did make, make that job pretty easy. And then dodging and burning will make a big difference. Also, um, playing with the, the levels of this body shell thing underneath. Limiting the highlights, put it in shadow, and then I'm going to make it a little bit cooler through color balance. There we go. And then we go to the burning, because if you're going to have these kind of um, growths on top, it's, they're definitely going to cast shadows underneath. Pretty strong shadows, but I'm still only burning the midtones. Right? And then on them themselves, I can exaggerate some of those shadows to help give it depth and help show the direction of the spine. But I like that there's reds and yellows and greens in this texture at the back. Then I might need to hit the highlights right at the edges. And even just erase them out slightly at the lower opacity. Oops. What is that revealing? Oh, it's that. I see. There, warp that right under. Okay. So if that's the body, I want to merge those layers, not merge them, but group them together into a group, call those body assets. and give it a color.